Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. Um, today we're going to be looking at the doctrine uh, of God as part of our Christian Basics series. And um, yeah, we're just going to start with God's Word today. I'm going to be reading from the Bible. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God bless the reading of His Word. This was from John, Gospel of John, chapter 1, 1 to 5. All right, so we're going to be talking about the doctrine of God today, and there's a lot of gro uh, ground to cover. As we just read these verses from the Gospel of John, um, we have pretty much everything to help us understand the doctrine or the teaching of God. Um, the, um, the doctrine of God is um, is vast. There's a lot that can be said. So, but we we're just going to focus on a few things here. So, as we just read um, about the, in the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word is Jesus Christ. All right, I repeat, the Word is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is the Word. So, if you've ever wondered, so instead of using Word, put in Jesus Christ there, and then you understand um, that uh, the Apostle John is talking about Jesus Christ. So we're going to be looking a bit at this um, uh, these, uh, this passage here we just read and um, uh, take a closer look at uh, what we can establish there. So, um, Jesus existed before anything had been created. How is that possible? So, a better way to say that is that we can say he, Jesus subsisted. So we're going to be looking a bit more about the difference between existed and subsisted um, as we're looking at the Trinity, right? The doctrine of the Trinity. Um, so, um, in other words, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? The three members of the Trinity. Uh, it's not that they, they it's we, we, the, not the word exist is better, but they're, they're uh, one being. It means in, 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 in essence, right? So there's, so basically, so this is the example. So one God, but three individual coexistent persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons and one God. We call that the Godhead, right? So we're going to be talking about that a little bit more too. And when we said, when we say, read in the Bible, he existed in the beginning with God. This means that there is a relationship between these three. So that's very important, right? So it's not some kind of a, you know, God we're dealing with out yonder, but we're dealing with a personal God. So God is not only divine, but he's also relation, relational, personal, right? So that's a very important thing to understand. And um, that's, I'll talk a little bit more of that too. Um, then also to understand that God created everything through him. And nothing was created except through him. So, Jesus Christ is the creator of the universe and of everything in it. What that means is there is no random matter or chance, but intentional, intelligent design. Right? God, as the designer, the creator God, created uh, everything through our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so, that's part of that too. And also, the other verse is the word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought life to everyone so here we see jesus as the creator of life he's a life giver and that's important because he comes himself as god in the flesh uh, god incarnate then that's what we mean by his life brought light to everyone right so as he comes into the world as god in the flesh he brings light to everyone and then the last part is very important so the uh, the light shines in the darkness 
and the darkness can never extinguish it. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. That is the gospel uh, in a nutshell. So that means the salvation Jesus provides to us, life, death and resurrection, that is the promise of eternal life for anyone who repents and believes in him. So, wow, I think that's pretty astonishing, isn't it? No. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> so we've got a lot of, lot of ground to cover. We're going to be looking at different parts here. We're going to be looking at the existence of God. Um, we're going to be looking at the knowledge of God. Like, can we know God? Yes. <laughs> we're going to be looking at the character of God. God has attributes. We call it attributes, um, for lack of a better way of saying it, um, that are incommunicable and communicable. Right. So we'll look at that, what that means. Then we'll look briefly at the Trinity, as I just mentioned, for God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, God the Holy Spirit, and also at God the Creator, and who and who also has a will. God is a person is personal, right? And he has a will. So we want to look at the will of God. And we want to um then also lastly look at God's um, providence and um, and decrees so um, you know God's you know laws rules regulations uh, what does that mean sometimes that may be a reason why people shy away from the Bible or it could be so it doesn't have to be so um, you know not just the Ten Commandments that people may uh, think oh I'm gonna be you know convicted and whatever and the truth is yes that is true so we're not going to say that's not so, but that's actually the key to success when we understand our brokenness, right? our broken relationship once we open the Bible and we um, learn more about our own um, brokenness. That's the key to success, uh, that we repent then and turn to Jesus, right? As a personal Lord and Savior. So that's the invitation, right? Okay, so those are going to be the parts we're looking at today. Um, uh, the word, um, the doctrine of God is sometimes called theology proper. Um, the reason for that is, is that, uh, the complete area when, when we, when we study or look at Christianity, there's the study of Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. So, um, when we look at God, the father, right, the first person, there's no hierarchy in that sense, but the first person, God the Father, um, we talk about theology proper. So that's just a little bit on the side there. And um, we, uh, uh, again, we don't want to make too much of um, uh, theological terms uh, because what matters is our relationship with Christ. So looking at the existence of God, often people ask, or we ask, does God exist? Does God exist? And if so, how do we know? Well, the Bible tells us that uh, the existence of God is assumed. And the reason for that is because God, or somebody might say, oh, you can't prove that God exists. Okay, all right. Do I need to, or does anybody need to prove that God uh, exists? No. Why? Because God has proven himself, right? He's revealed himself in and through God's word, in and through the person of Jesus Christ. So that's what we mean the existence of God is assumed, right? So remember, the we if you followed along in the previous segment in this Bible Basics uh, on uh, the study of the Bible, um, we remember God has given us his word, the Bible, God's word. So... Um, as we as we can see, then there are two uh, ways that we can know God exists. One uh, is again is a uh, we call it uh, there's two parts: general revelation and special revelation. So, general revelation means that God has um, um, put into our hearts as human beings the sense of um, belonging to God. But the challenge is, the problem is, is that we, uh, due to our sin nature, we are, we are estranged. We have an estranged relationship with God by default. Um, so 
that's part of the general revelation. And God has also revealed himself through, um, uh, through nature, through the creation, right? Through the, through, through, through the universe. So we're going to be looking at that in more detail, our sin nature in more detail when we look at the doctrines of sin and salvation. So that's just general for a person, an unbeliever, or somebody who doesn't, uh, who's not a follower of Jesus Christ, not yet, but hopefully soon, already has that sense of, um, you know, God's law already written in, in their hearts, so to say. So by contrast, as followers, as believers, we have a growingly stronger inner awareness of, of God, right? And um, I encourage you, again, there's an article um, that I wrote, and it's all there for you free. Take a closer look at some of these Bible verses that deal with that. It's just something you don't want to, mit uh, don't want to miss. So um, then, of course, the assumption that God exists is also uh, based on the fact that we're made in the image of God. Um, we're going to be looking at the creation account in Genesis, book of Genesis, and we're made in the image of God. Uh, we call that from Latin, like in Latin, imago di, imago, image, di of God. So made in the image of God and understand um, what that exactly means. So there's different um, arguments, also called proofs, um, um, to show that God exists. Um, but I'm not gonna, we're not going to go into those um, at this point. Uh, they're all in the article. I encourage you read read upon them there. But um, th those are those are just um, you know those are logical like uh, arguments um, which are uh, you know we're entering the realm of Christian philosophy and reasoning and argumentation. Um, it is it is primarily through God's word that God reveals Himself, and that is the Bible. So. Um, it's important to understand that he, um, that we understand that uh, as God is God and we are we, we are God is the creator and we are his creation, that it is only God who can, um, who can um, uh, erase our sin and our sins. And so that's very, very important. That's our Lord Jesus Christ himself could do that. So that was the existence of God. Um, there's much. There's a whole lot more to that. Um, lots to talk about. So when we talk about the knowledge of God, so is it really is it possible to really know God? Is it the question is is it possible to really know God? How much of God can we know? And so the answer is again it depends on your. Um, um, how far you you know may, may be have grown in your personal relationship with Jesus Christ already, um, and uh, we understand that um, it is God who has to reveal Himself to us because He's He's divine. He's in a different category than we are as His creation, and so um, um, we have to understand adm and admit our limitations, right? Because we are limited as human beings, we are the creation, and God is not, right? He's unlimited. We're going to look a bit more at that in, in God's um, uh, character, right? The character of God. So I'll share about that. Um, and, and yet, lastly, we can say um, we are able to know God truly. We are able to know God truly. If that wasn't so, then um, God would not have revealed himself in the way he did through our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, uh, being God incarnate as God in the flesh, dying for our sins and um, atoning for our sins, and then being raised on the third day uh, thereafter and descending to, uh, to heaven and then sending us the Holy Spirit. So um, that's again to properly understand how God reveals himself on, and to us on a daily basis is that's why we need the Bible, right? There's, the, there's God's word again, right? So encouraging you to open the Bible and take a look. So, um, yeah, so we can truly know God and um, 
to, to what extent, again, depends to a certain, to just to a certain degree on us, as much as time as we're willing to, to open and read and studying the Bible. Okay, so it's just something we want to consider. And um, that's the, um, that's the knowledge of God. Now, since God is personal, God, we're looking at the character of God. So he has characteristics, right? It's something similar, what we may call a personality, right? A person, every person, you, me, everybody, we have what we call personality. Um, often, <laughs> oftentimes, um, what I like to admit, um, not so kosher, but um, we have a personality distinctives uh, that make us who we are, individual uh, beings, right? So, since God is infinite, we are finite. I, it's the better to call these character characteristics attributes, and as such, there are two types of um, uh, attributes. There's incommunicable attributes, right? So. These are, these are um, incommunicable in the sense that um, they can only be found in God alone, right? Because of who he is, his essence, his divine being. And um, so just considering some of these incommunicable attributes is when we look at the names of God in the Bible. So there's different uh, descriptions of his character that we find in, this, in, in the names, right? So one is Elohim. Right, it's like the it's the plural of majesty. So here we see God's um, transcendence and superiority. Right. Another one is Adonai. Um, commonly, we usually in English we say Lord. Right. That's why we say call God our Lord God from that word, and uh, that's also revealed in the Bible, primarily in the Old Testament. And then the last one is. Um, there's many other old names, but we just picked a few here. One is Yahweh. Yeah, and Yahweh is uh, one of those words uh, which we, um, we, we uh, well, we understand uh, that it occurs thousands, like 6,000 times, I think over 6,000 times in the Bible and the Old Testament. Um, uh, we, we don't fully understand what that means. We have, to, we have to accept our limitations. We're not going to pretend we know everything because God knows everything, right? But he's revealed himself in and through the name Yahweh. And that is when he says, I am who I am to Moses. And that is directly linked to Jesus then when he makes this, uh, the, the I am claims, right? In the Gospel of John, many, many times, I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? I am, I am, I am overall. So he, he, Jesus maintains his equality with Yahweh God. So um, those are, again, incommunicable um, attributes. Those are th um, divine attributes only God has. And um, so we understand that um, um, God is different than us. And he um, has things, attributes, characteristics we do not have. Some other ones are his holiness. God is perfect and holy. That means he's, he's perfect and without any flaws or sins. And he's immutable. That means he doesn't change. And he's infinite. In other words, God has no limits. And um, so those are... Those are just a few attributes, incommunicable ones. There's many, many more. Um, they're all in the article. Take a look, have a read. And um, the, um, the importance here to understand of the attributes of God is one of them is uh, God's wrath. I had mentioned it in the last session. And, and that is not an attribute, um, but we think about it. But it is more like a response, right? God responds to us. So when people are disobedient or rebellious against God or people who deny Jesus as God in the flesh, they place them, they place, people place themselves under God's wrath. So um, that's something that uh, we certainly do not want to do. So we, uh, 
we read in the book of Romans, and uh, God's wrath is different than ours, says Romans 12, verse 19. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. God bless you in his word. And this verse links back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 32, 35. I read it. I will take revenge. I will pay them back. In due time, their feet will slip. Their day of disaster will arrive and their destiny will overtake them. Oh, God bless the reading of this word. <laughs> so, what does all of this mean? So, while God is uh, also all loving, he is also wrathful, all right? And we want to understand that. Um, so, um, when we break um, that covenant, in the Old Testament, they had covenants that God made with people. He also made a covenant with himself. Right? the um, uh, different kinds of covenant. Um, when people break these agreements, God is wrathful against sin. God cannot tolerate evil and sin. He hates sin and evil. And so we, um, that's how he responds and freely chooses to um, create the world and also to respond to sin in wrath. All right? So in other words, for us, as followers of Jesus, that means never, never pay back evil with evil, uh, right? Let let God do that. Our Lord Jesus Christ has already taken uh, care of that on the cross, and so He will do that on on Judgment Day, the second coming of Christ. Um, um, he will uh, call everybody into account, all the good and bad that people did, no matter no matter who it is, you, me, everybody. So. We don't have to worry about that. So um, it's important to understand that um, the um, difference between God and mankind uh, also helps us understand that um, there is no um, there is no chance in that sense. That God God is providential, right? There's no luck or random chance. Uh, there's the law of cause and effect that means things happen for a reason right so um, it's just something where we understand that the um, you know when we when we read more about Jesus or you read more about Jesus you see that um, and we embrace him and understand he's our Lord personal Lord and Savior as God uh, revealed on himself we want to you know we want to worship Jesus and we want to be in awe of Jesus right? it's just overwhelming so um, that's where, we, where it takes humility. And that's an area sometimes where we have to ask Jesus to help us with, um, to let go of pride and become more humble, right? Because um, God has incommunicable attributes uh, which we do not possess. And uh, God is sovereign in all of those areas. However, God also has communicable attributes. So what are communicable, communicable attributes of God? So, so there's things that we, um, we learn about God and we talk about, but there's other things that are harder for us to, uh, to explain. So, um, so for example, uh, when you look at the book of Ephesians, uh, uh, the book of Ephesians 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 1 says, that we should try to be like God, just like uh, how children should be like their parents, right? So we try to imitate uh, God as our Heavenly Father. But what does that mean? Um, that means that we can, um, you know, follow God and uh, copy some of the qualities which are called communicable attributes. And um, so we can only, we're, we're only able to imitate God, our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, but since we have some things common with him, but we can never be uh, Jesus, or we can never be God, because God is God, Jesus is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. But um, it is important to understand that um, it's a big one. Here's a big point you want to consider is that um, um, some people believe, unfortunately, uh, that everyone 
can be very good and pure like God. And that is not what the Bible tells us. Um, that's, that's false. Um, it, because Why? Because the Bible tells us it is only God uh, who is completely good and pure. So absolutely good and pure. So it can't be us then, who are absolutely good, good and pure. So, um, however, um, we are, as we uh, imitate Jesus, we are considered good because of Jesus, not because we're perfect like God or perfect like Jesus. He calls us to be perfect. Oh, he sets a very high standard. Yeah, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father in heaven is to be perfect. And yes, that's true. It's important to, to try to be good, but we can never be as perfect as God, which doesn't mean that we're not going to follow God's laws and what Jesus teaches us. That doesn't mean that at all, but it just helps us understand um, and takes the weight off of us that there's nothing good or redeemable about us, and um, it's only the Holy Spirit um, who can who can help us um, grow in our personal relationship with Jesus Christ and become more and more like Jesus. It's a lifetime process, right? So, good. Um, one thing to understand too is again, I talked about the Holy Spirit. We talked about the Holy Spirit. Why do we call um, the um, the uh, Holy Spirit holy? Because the Holy Spirit reminds us how good and pure God is. So if you go into the Bible, you'll see many, many times where we come across uh, the holiness of God, holy, holy, holy as God. And so the Holy Spirit is God, and um, He is the one um, who um, who helps us um, embrace the um, the communicable attributes of God. All right. So uh, keep in mind too that sometimes there's people who say, um, "Well, someone like we're not, you know, we're not. Well, I'm not. Somebody may say I'm not that bad, or I'm a good person, or." Um, whatever that is, um, but you know, um, that's a self-deception. That's not what the Bible tells us, because apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Right? There's nothing good about us. I repeat that. We by default incapable of being, you know, good, because we're enemies of God. Um, so we're going to look at that a little bit more closely in the doctrines of the, of, of the fall, sin and salvation, and. Um, yeah, to, to, to understand more why, why we cannot be good in our own strength um, apart from uh, Jesus. All right. So here's a few. There's a few um, communicable attributes. Uh, let's just look at this. I was a pick out three. Look at the article. There's some more goodness. Yeah. It's about being uh, like God um, in, 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 in our moral behavior. Um, right, we can be good to each other, you know, love your neighbor as thyself, and as are those examples, and love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, uh, strength, spirit, right? Those are the standards that God set, and that's what we share in God's goodness. Um, so we look at, we look um, at, to God and His Word, but um, we can never be completely perfect. It's, it, that's just not going to happen, right? Then there's also um, love. Love is something, uh, sometimes it's a little bit overemphasized, um, but God is also love. And uh, we know that that is something, that he has perfect, he has a perfect divine love. We call it agape love. It's divine love um, that he revealed to us through our Lord Jesus who, who loved us um, through, even though because we are, or are as sinners, our love is not always perfect, but um, through Jesus we can still show uh, love to others, right, and and share that communicable uh, communicable attribute of love. And then there's um, yeah. So no, I did three, four. So here's two more. Uh, mercy, mercy is one um, that we can show. Actually, we are called to show. Jesus tells us to show mercy to others. Even when they um, might not, you know, we may think they may not deserve it, 
but we want to show mercy to other people because God, uh, uh, Jesus showed us, us mercy, right? And he says, Jesus says, um, I want you to show mercy, not offer, offer sacrifices. In other words, I want to show, I want you to look, you know, look after other people, even though they, do, they may do mean or evil things to us. Uh, that doesn't mean that we tolerate evil. We walk away, right? When people uh, do evil to us, um, we, we pray, we speak a prayer of blessing, and then we move on. Uh, but we release them to Jesus and love and forgiveness. And uh, that's um, mercy. So the mercy Jesus shows us, we want to show to other people too. And then, of course, speech. Um, the, so God speaks through his word, through the Bible, right? That's oh, that's like something when God speaks the universe into existence. It's, it's really hard to understand. We can't really comprehend that, how that works. But um, in Genesis 1-3, for example, when, he's, when God says, let there be light, God speaks and, then, and it happened, right? In other words, God always tells the truth. And his words, his words have a lot of power, right? His words, our words as human beings aren't always true. And they don't have the same power as God's word. But we can embrace the, um, this communicable attribute um, of God's word as we engage God's word, the Bible, every day, right? So those are just a few um, um, things to consider. And sometimes we wonder... Um, as you can also read in the article, we think, uh, wh what does, when we think about these attributes, well, what does that mean for us? So God's wrath at the same time, you know, sometimes we think that people, um, you know, get away with evil or it looks like or appears that way, right? But nobody gets away with anything, right? <laughs> it's just so important to understand. And um, the... Um, the reason for God's um, uh, wrath on the other side is one of his characters is that he's very patient, right? We can, uh, we know in Psalm 103, 8 and 9, uh, it says, The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always rebuke, nor will he keep his anger forever. God bless you know his word. So in other words, God waits to punish bad people. Right? I mean, bad people meaning people who are living in rebellion towards him, don't even acknowledge him uh, or deny Jesus God in the flesh, but uh, that doesn't have to be so because he wants, God wants people to be sorry for what they did and leading them to repentance. Right? Repentance, repentance, repentance is, is, is a big word, repentance. Uh, look at uh, Romans 2, 4. And so... Um, it's one of the things to uh, consider. So along with God's wrath, we have God's patience. And that's really our calling too, is to, um, uh, in our work as followers of Jesus, we, uh, we, which is not easy to do, right? It's challenging many times um, but for us as human beings. But it's not us who does it, it's Jesus who does it through our hearts to be patient and uh, with others, especially as we share the good news with others, right? And so we're grateful, we have to be grateful uh, because it's the Holy Spirit who draws people to Jesus, to the Bible, to himself, and it's not us. We can tell people about the good news and I pray that we do as followers of Christ. But in the end, um, um, there's um, uh, Judgment Day when Jesus returns the second time and uh, well there's no second chance to repent then that's why we want to encourage people to repent in other words turning away from sin right now and embrace uh, faith and uh, new life in jesus christ right okay that was a lot uh, so let's take a little breath here all right um, pause for a moment before we continue yeah Okay, you, you ready? All right, let's look at the Trinity. 
God in three persons. I'm going to be reading from the uh, New Living Translation, Matthew 3, 13 to 17. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. God bless the reading of his word. So in this Bible passage here, we see um, um, the Trinity um, as um, expressed here. Uh, three persons, right? God the Father, speaking through the voice, God the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit sending with him. And um, John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, or John the Baptist, um, was given a God-given sign. So uh, look and go into the Bible, look at John chapter 1, verses 31 to 34. And that's how you can see how that connects to Matthew 3, 13 to 17. Um, so that's how God was going to reveal to John the Baptizer, Baptist, John the Baptist, that this would be um, uh, the Messiah, Jesus as God in the flesh, so God, in other words, himself coming. So here we see the, well, the word, <coughs> sorry, the word Trinity itself does not appear in the Bible, right? It's a, con it's a concept, it's, an, it's important though for our understanding of God, it must not be denied, we have to affirm the doctrine of the Trinity, but um, it's, a, it's a good way, when you look at this Bible verse, that we see um, the, um, the Godhead, we call it the Godhead, that is the full Trinity. So we, it's, so as we said, so it's, there's um, three persons, but one God. Three persons, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but one God. And that is the unity and plurality um, that is unique to the Christian faith, right? To Christianity, big one, right? And um, so we see here that we have, um, uh, at the time of the baptism, is the, um, the um, witness by God himself, God the Father. This is my dearly beloved son, listen to him. And John the Baptist, seeing like, we can't see the Holy Spirit, but the Bible doesn't tell us how John the baptize, baptizer saw it, but it was revealed to him that uh, the, the Trinity is here manifested and that this is indeed the Messiah. So it's a very important witness and we uh, have to be sure that when we are talking about, we're still talking about the doctrine of God, right? God the Father, but when we look at the other two persons of the Trinity, it's Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, which we'll also do in more detail uh, in some in separate segments. Um, uh, anybody who claims, this, this is a big one, all right, big one. Anyone who claims to be a Christian must affirm uh, the doctrine of the Trinity since it's foundational to, to uh, the Christian faith, just as the resurrection is. We must affirm the bodily resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? Okay, now um, a bit more about God the Creator. So um, God creates the universe uh, out of nothing. We call it ex nihilo, out of Latin, ex out of nihilo, nothing. What does that mean? Right? How does that work? So um, before the event, this event, nothing existed but God himself. That's what the Bible tells us. Before this, before the creation of the universe, nothing existed but God himself. So what that means is that matter and particles in the, in the, in the universe um, are um, 
they have um you know matter ma it's not like the universe always existed in and by itself like it was always there that's false but the universe means that god created everything out of nothing and it also means that the universe and everything god created has meaning and purpose so this is important to understand right we want to understand when we're uh, looking at the bible and reading and studying it and going in a relation with christ we want to answer we want answers as people to these two questions uh, to several questions um, where do i come from why am i here and where am i going i'll repeat where do i come from why am i here and where am i going the Bi the bible is the only text that coherently and cohesively provides an answer to each and every one of these questions and that is something you want to understand um, and you only can understand once you read and embrace uh, the bible and especially the work of our lord jesus christ um, um, in the bible in the gospels and so we can ask why did god create the universe right why did god create it? the universe answer god created the universe to reveal his glory god revealed everything um, for um, his own purpose and glory and um, why did he create mankind he created mankind human beings to have a relationship with us because he's a relational god right there was there's this eternal love relationship between god the father god the son and the holy spirit as we just said in the trinity and they're relational they exist in a love relationship agape love as far as we can you know understand and explain it so god invites us as people into this relationship and that's what happened when he created um uh, mankind and said in Genesis 131 after he had created mankind uh, it was very good his creation right so God creates the universe with everything in it including angels uh, animals nature human beings and we're going to look at that further uh, in the doctrine of the creation the goal and purpose of all this is very important is that we um, look more give more thought and think about the details of the creation of man that is um, you know mankind men and women uh, see uh, what, what what angelic beings you know the creation of them mean what are fallen angels satan and demons um, and we're going to see how all of this fits in into the fall of mankind right so that's going to be treated separately and um yeah so that's uh that part on uh, god the creator we're gonna look at the creation so that's that's also a big doctrine as well so, so as we said and to continue as we asked does god have a will does god have a will yes Let's read Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. You ready? The Lord our God has secrets known to no one. We are not accountable for them, but we and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us, so that we may obey all the terms of these instructions. God bless you in this word. It's so important, this verse. I'm going to read it again. It's in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 29 verse 29 the lord our god has secrets known to no one we are not accountable for them but we and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us so that we may obey all the terms of these instructions god bless the reading of his word so in this verse in sorry in the book of deuteronomy um we see that uh, God has a will and um, there's two types there's two kinds of will his hidden will as we just read there are some things that God only knows and we often call that um, his hidden his hidden will right and 
by contrast, he also has a revealed will. So things um, that he has revealed uh, to us, uh, for one, uh, uh, namely our Lord Jesus Christ, namely himself as God in the flesh, uh, through his word, through the Bible. However, there are certain things that are hidden and we, um, this side of eternity, um, God decides for whatever reason not to reveal them to us. So um, I encourage you to look at that a bit more in the article, read more about that. There's some um, Bible verses for you. I encourage you to read them as well and to see um, how um, uh, God's uh, hidden and revealed will uh, work together. Right. So we have to distinguish there between um, uh, what God's um, God's will is, his revealed will, and his secret or hidden will. So just in, just in a nutshell, his, the revealed will, that is what God has shown or told us, right, in the Bible. That's why we want to know, we want to know God's will, we have to open the Bible. And there's also his secret will, uh, what God keeps to himself and does not tell us, right? So um, that's okay, right? Because God is God and he has a plan and purpose. So um, um, he does not always tell us what the plan is, but uh, he does invite us into his relation, into a relationship with him, a personal one. And uh, sometimes, or yeah, more than more often, we can see as we look back, maybe in our lives, we can actually see, but always only looking back, never in the future, no fortune telling. That's what we're not. We don't do that as as believers, followers of Jesus. But looking back, we can sometimes see how he is revealed, how himself, like looking after our lives or as we're growing up or protecting us or, you know, providing for us. Um, yeah, so many, many things that uh, God does on our behalf. And looking, and only in hindsight, like looking back, can we see that. So what does Jesus then tell us about God's will? It's very, very important to understand that. So um, Jesus, Jesus tells us right, to pray that um, we, should, we should go and seek out God and uh, seek our Lord Jesus out, pray to our Lord Jesus and follow God's rules. Right? Jesus himself, right, as God in the flesh, he followed God's rules. So as an example, that's part of being you know, in God's will. So um, we... Um, so God has, has a sovereign plan, and even though uh, sometimes, unfortunately, people do their own thing, or they ignore God, or they ignore Jesus, or they're not in the Bible, whatever, um, but that doesn't mean people are still responsible for their actions, right? So the Bible tells us we're still responsible uh, for doing good, right, and not doing bad things, right? So our free will... Uh, even though God is in control of everything, we still have choices, right? So some things in God's plan are done by people, not just by God. And um, he, um, it's different than like chance or fate, remember, where, uh, you know, something is random. Uh, no, God has a perfect plan. And uh, we, um, and this includes, big one, the things we do, what we say and do. So in other words, the, uh, um, the choices we make and actions truly matter, truly matter to God. It's not like, not like God, even though he is sovereign and he knows, like, you know, he, he decides, you know, what he knows and what, and what his will is. Um, he still holds us accountable, right? So the choices uh, matter, and especially our choice to, to turn and f to Jesus with a repentant heart and follow him. Um, that's very, very important to understand. So um, everything we say and do matters. Um, good. So lastly, uh, we're going to just briefly look at um, God's providence and his decrees. And um, I'm going to read here from Romans uh, chapter 8, 28 to verse 30. Paul writes, the Apostle Paul writes, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God 
and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like a son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. God bless the reading of us word. That's Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 30. So, providence. Providence, providence refers to God's sovereign, um, interventive, and protective care. So, uh, two things this doesn't mean. Um, this doesn't mean, I mean, as followers of Jesus Christ, um, as we say, you know, you know, somebody, why do bad things happen to good people? And, 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 it's, and it's true, the Bible tells us that even for us as followers of Jesus Christ, um, it's not everything is, you know, uh, that no bad things happen to us. God can will it so that it's still so. So that's important to understand. But however, we um, understand that we still remain under God's um, sovereign and uh, protective care. In other words, God is actively involved in our lives through Jesus Christ. All right, so he cares and uh, he, he, he uh, looks after us, right? And another, another thing is, somebody says, well, if God has already decided who is predestined to come to him or elect, then it doesn't matter. Then why should I turn to God? That's false. Because um, the, our call remains. Right? Jesus calls us. Right? Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God bless you with his word. It's Matthew, from the Gospel of Matthew. Right. So the calling, uh, God, remember God does not want anybody to perish. Uh, if I hadn't said it, I'm saying it now. God's desire is that nobody perishes. Why? Because God created us and God loves all people. All people, no matter how bad or how evil people are, he wants us to turn to him in repentance. Right, so we call that's our, our call, and this is important, right? To understand of the doctrine of God is it is God's as not just God's will, but also part of His providence and decrees is our call to turn away from pride in humility. Why? Because we recognize God's sovereignty, right? So, for all of us who are followers of Jesus Christ. Repentance is mandatory. We have to, and repentance means to turn away from sin. Can we do that in our own strength? No. How, how do we do that? We repent. In other words, we confess to our Lord Jesus Christ uh, um, our, our sins to Jesus, ask him to help us, um, to uh, cleanse us from all unrighteousness in repentance um, with a heart bent towards him. And he does it. He, he, we invite him into our hearts and lives, and uh, he does um, he does the rest. Actually, he's the author and perfecter of our faith. Um, hard to understand. Hard to hard, like we have to embrace that. The Bible tells us that. But he's the beginner. He's the author. He calls us to himself. He's after our heart, right? Not after our intellect or smart or rich we are or how you know important we are or think we are. But he's after our heart, a repentant heart. So repentance is mandatory for us, uh, for all of us who are who claim to be followers of Christ, because without, without that, um, our heart not bent towards Jesus, uh, we can't have a personal relationship with Him. Right? There's no salvation. All that is left is you know maybe good deeds, good deeds, whatever that means, right? But it has no impact on anything related to our Lord. So um, it's similar, it's not exactly the same, but I mean, like there's people unfortunately denying God, Jesus as God in the flesh. So if that doesn't change, that we pray for people, that they repent, turn away from sin, turn to Jesus, that leads, leads to eternal separation from God. And we call that uh, hell, right? The, the, the reality of hell is there, hell is real. And so we want to... Uh, um, 
make sure we understand who Jesus is as God in the flesh, uh, understand why he came to atone for our sins, um, died in our stead and was risen, right? Has was resurrected um, as he had promised, right? So that's important to understand. And then with a repentant heart, turn to Jesus. And uh, that's it, it, one of the essential main parts of the doctrine of God. So, um, yeah, and as we enter our personal issue with Jesus, he uh, convicts us, convinces us, helps us, heals us, and helps us grow in a relationship because he has, a, as I said, personal, eternal will, plan, and purpose for every person, man and woman. But we have to do it by the book, um, as, the, as the scripture tells us, right? And follow his, especially his, God's will, plan, purpose, and timing, which is often very different than ours. So if somebody says, well, you know, I want it now, no, that's not, that's not going to work, right? If the, if, if we don't prayerfully stay in the word and Jesus reveals to us, speaks into our hearts, we're going to be outside of God's will and uh, that never works out, right? That's just one of the biblical principles we can learn uh, from the Bible. And so, um, so one of his uh, parts of God's uh, eternal will is to um, to share the fulfill the great commission. In other words, uh, share the gospel, the good news with others. Right. However, the God reveals that to us, and sometimes there's like a preparation. There's actually often, as uh, so we look in the lives of people, um, preparation time before God calls us into action. To do uh, to share the good news with others, and that makes sense because God has to uh, help us and heal us often from the wounds of the past. That um, you know things may have been done to us or happened to us uh, growing up or as children or growing up, or um, uh, so He has to get us ready uh, to fulfill the Great Commission. Right? It doesn't mean we can't share tell others you know the good news. But we have to let the Holy Spirit lead us, right? So it's in 1 Peter, the first letter of Peter, 1 Peter 3.15. If anybody asks you about um, your, your the, the reason for your faith in Christ, basically, uh, be ready, be prepared to answer, right? But unless that isn't the case, um, you know, we're not going to do, you know, things in our own strength. Uh, that's not going to work. That doesn't work. And God doesn't want us to. So just a few examples. So... Abraham, 80 years of age before God called him, right? Then there's Moses, uh, 40 years in the wilderness, having fled, and another 40 years with the Israelites, um, and unfortunately not entering the promised land. Joshua did that, and Joshua and Caleb led them. Joshua was the leader, and uh, we think about um, the Apostle Paul, right? Saul became Paul. Saul was a persecutor of Christians, and he became Paul as he was called to on the road to Damascus. Amazing, from hostile hostile witness to, to a personal witness to Jesus Christ. So when Saul became Paul, there was still a period of time, we don't know exactly, like 10, 10 years or somewhere thereabouts, before he was fully um, engaged in all his missionary journeys, for example, right? So, yeah, to consider, and of course, our Lord Jesus himself, right? He did it by the book. He followed the rabbinic tradition um, at age 30. He then entered into his ministry. Um, makes sense, right? Jesus as God in the flesh. God himself gives us right the law, the mosaic law and everything else. So he does it by the book, right? And um, so 30 years, pretty much, you know, you know, I don't want to call it obscurity, but um, n not in action, so to say, as far as we know, the Bible doesn't tell, it tells us a little bit. As a young person in Luke, we read about his childhood as he visits the temple. But other than that, it's really 30 years before um, Jesus himself comes into action. And that's the same with us today. So, good. So, let's just summarize this. Um, there's um, basically, um, this was a basic overview of who God is. And it's important to understand that he's both personal and relational. God is personal and relational, right? We learned that from the Trinity, the pre-existent God, three persons in one, 
in one uh, uh, God, as one God in the Godhead, and that is relational, that he wants to uh, have a personal relationship, relationship with us. That's why Jesus Christ came as God in the flesh, to have a personal relationship with us. And so and that's why we're here, um, God has revealed himself in the Bible, and uh, uh, primarily through uh, Jesus Christ, what he, what he, uh, what he's revealed to us uh, in and through his words and deeds and his actions, right? So he's not some great teacher, but as God in the flesh, uh, we we have his word and we take him by his word, and we want to follow him, follow his word, right? So that was the the doctrine of, of God. So in the video description, there's an in-depth article, a link. You can freely access all this material is all free. You can share it, public domain, um, use it, quote it, share it. Um, and again, um, uh, this is the the uh, the doctrine of God or theology proper is so vast. So um, we're just focusing here on the really the main, uh, you know, what can be established um, uh, as a basic. Uh, overview to point you uh, to Jesus, right? That's the most important thing. So the goal is to get you to open the Bible, read, study it regularly on a daily basis, and grow in your relationship with Christ, with our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why God has given us his word, given us himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, and revealed himself to all of us. So, important, yeah. As we move on, next, God willing, is the doctrine of creation. Um, remind yourself that Jesus Christ is the Word. All right, He's the creator of all that exists. So, a little homework for you reread the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. Reread John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5 in the New Testament as we started off here. And understand, okay, the Word. Now you know that the Word is our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, yeah, read on from there. So that'll help uh, help you uh, for our, our next session, God willing. So Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for this blessed day and that we can think about you and how you've revealed yourself here in the doctrine of God and uh, that you're with us and for us that you're personal and relational, and that you want a personal relationship with us, with, with all mankind, with, with every human being. And remind us of that truth. And we just want to thank you for revealing yourself so much. We understand there are certain uh, attributes, characteristics, which only you have, which we do not have. But thank you for the ones that you have communicated to us and uh, help us embrace you, your word, Stay in the Bible, um, share the good news with others, and uh, help us grow in our personal relationship with you, Lord Jesus. Um, as we turn to you with humble, surrendered, humble, and especially repentant, obedient hearts. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and love you, and praise you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And always remember, the best Bible is an open Bible. Please join again soon.